Jeez, you take a day and now you got to see this news that the media is trying to spin and BS you in the thinking that inflation coming in at 3% yesterday is just news to celebrate and do cartwheels over and uh, we should all be high-fiving each other. Woo! Yeah, that's not going to happen. Not here, at least. Good morning. It's great to be here on a Thursday on KCMO Talk Radio. Appreciate John Whitmer holding it down yesterday, and and you'll be hearing a little bit more from John over the next few days ahead. Be taking some time, but uh, always appreciate our buddy John Whitmer down in Wichita holding down the fort for us here on KCMO. So uh, here's how some of this is being written. Uh, The Associated Press, after two years of painfully high prices, Inflation in the United States has reached its lowest point in more than two years. 3% in June compared with 12 months earlier, a sign that the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes have steadily slowed price increases across the country. Now, they write that as if the pain is over. They write that as if somehow the pain of high prices have gone away. Now, that's the Associated Press, and you know what they are. There is still plenty of pain. Being 3% above a year ago when the inflation rate was 9% is not really a good thing, right? I mean, you have to remember, this is not 3% above some made-up number that never changes. It's 3% above where we were one year ago. And one year ago, we had inflation that was 8 to 9%. For a period of time there, right? It was uh, late spring into the summer. Last June, we hit 9%. So it's not like we're sitting here and saying, well, you know, it's coming down. It's back to where it was pre-COVID. That's the problem with inflation. Once the prices kick in, they never go down. You just have to slow the increase down as quickly as you can and as fast as you can. And that's as a result, you know, what the Fed has done here. But you look at it and you have to say to yourself, okay, 3% inflation is great. We're getting closer towards where the Fed wants to be, which is 2%. They want to be at 2% inflation every month, year over year. That's where they want to be. That's their target, 2%. Well, they're getting closer to that, but they're still 50% above where they want to be. Yes, 3 is better than 9. I'm totally accepting of that. But they also caused a lot of pain to get us down to this 3%. Mehdi Hassan is a guy that writes, uh, he's not a writer, he's a TV guy at MSNBC. So when this news broke yesterday, Mehdi Hassan of MSNBC writes here, to be clear, if you blamed Joe Biden for high inflation, then you have to give him credit, he writes, for low inflation. Nah, nah. No, I mean, I mean, <laughs> F em. that's not how it works, my man. <laughs> that is not how it works. Fake news. That's exactly right. We had to crush inflation with interest rate increases that are hurting Main Street America. But yes, thank you, Joe. Oh, please, Joe. We are so grateful you have crushed inflation. No, the Federal Reserve crushed inflation and has caused enormous amounts of economic pain for Main Street America in the process. Have you tried to get a mortgage lately? Have you tried to get a car loan lately? Have you seen the differences, you know, compared to two years ago and what it would cost you to take out that same mortgage from a couple of years ago when mortgage rates were at 3% versus now being at 7? What about car loans? They're rising astronomically. If you've got to get yourself a vehicle, there is a lot of pain that's been caused by this. Now, okay, fine. Unemployment has not ticked up. But once again, that's, I believe, because we're in this weird economic time in the wake of COVID where we spent trillions of dollars we didn't have. We caused this inflation, but the workforce is still all jacked up from, you know, two and a half, three years ago. We still are trying to get some of the jobs back from COVID-19 and what we did artificially to the economy. So like this is unlike any kind of economic cycle that we've lived through in our lifetime. So I'm I'm glad that unemployment is staying pretty low, but that's not a sign that this administration has done anything at all right. They just when you look at it on its surface, they simply have not done that. 
Now, how did uh, other news media spin this yesterday? Let's take a listen to Nora O'Donnell, CBS News. Here's how they reported it last night on the Nightly News. President Biden is celebrating some good... President Biden is celebrating some good economic news back here at home with inflation falling to its lowest annual rate in more than two years. The Labor Department reports the consumer price index sank to 3% in June. That's down from a 40-year high of 9.1% last summer. The Federal Reserve is expected to continue to raise interest rates until reaching its target of 2% inflation. Okay, so what you heard there from Nora O'Donnell was accurate, that they are still going to increase interest rates most likely now they might do it at a slower pace but how long are we going to be in this high interest rate environment that's the other question that people are asking and that is a reasonable question to be asking yourself right now what is the end here how does this end i mean you'd like to think that okay you get inflation down to two percent and then you can start cutting rates but i'm not convinced that's going to be happening I, I just I have a hard time seeing this Federal Reserve say, OK, we got two percent. Now we're going to cut it because they still have this concern that this administration in particular is going to be out there and trying to spend money hand over fist as much as they can. And as fast as they can, by the way, as fast as much as they can, because you know what? That's what they want to do anyway. And they have in no way if you think that they've learned their lesson, they have in no way learned their lesson. If they had their druthers, you know what they would be doing right now? They'd be spending money that, you know, we don't have. So here's just a real-life comparison, right? Um, Mortgage rates were under 3% in the middle of COVID after they cut rates to basically zero. If you were to buy a a half-a-million-dollar home, uh, you know, it's a nice house, $500,000 house, the mortgage would be about $1,900 a month when interest rates were under 3%. Now... That same house for $500,000 with a mortgage rate over 7% is $3,400. You're talking about more than a 50% increase just on your mortgage payment on the exact same home comparing under 3% rates to over 7% rates. Those have real consequences on not just buying houses, but on, you know, how people do a lot of things with equity from homes, reinvestments, things like that. So there are real life consequences. Now, to the uber wealthy who are paying with cash for most things in their world, this is irrelevant, right? If you are a cash buyer of homes or cars and listen, when it comes to cars, you know, Dave Ramsey's model on that. And uh, I'm a Dave guy. I believe in a lot of what he says. But I understand everybody can do it. If you are a cash buyer of things in life, this has no impact on you. These rates are mostly irrelevant to you. But you're also not the ones who get hit when eggs go up and the price of gas goes up and milk goes up and everything like that. You're not the one typically that gets hit. Main Street working class, working poor are the ones that ultimately get hit the most. And for a guy who came into office and claimed, what was the Biden line? He was going to build the economy from the bottom out. Instead of the top down, he has not done that. He has done more pain to the bottom in this country via bad economic policy that has driven inflation than anything else. That's who he's caused the most pain for with inflation. It's a tax on working people and the poor. So I'm not going to sit here this morning on a Thursday and do cartwheels for the guy because, uh, you know, he caused this mess in large part. He helped. He certainly put this thing on steroids with his insane spending early in 2021. 913-408-7710-614 as we get it going on a Thursday morning on KCMO Talk Radio. Uh, The Missouri Attorney General is going after Target with a handful of other states. We'll tell you why. And what that's about and the details behind it coming up. Pete Mundo back on a Thursday on KCMO. Well, I do feel the need to just mention this here because uh, some of you are noting this on the text line with these inflation numbers yesterday. 3%, which is still 50% above where the Fed wants it to be at 2% and uh, well below 9% inflation. This is on the text line, which is 913-408-7710. Pete, please tell me the price of what has went down as inflation is supposedly lowering. 
The prices are remaining the same or still rising on everything I've looked at. This is a joke. I, you're right. Inflation lowering does not mean prices went down. What it means is they didn't go up as fast. That's all it means. You give your spouse a budget for whatever, shoes, clothing. You're going back and forth. You're debating how much to spend. And your spouse is bragging about not spending nearly as much as the prior month on shoes or clothes or whatever. It doesn't mean necessarily a good job's being done. It's just, you know, that's what you can compare it to. They're just not spending as much. That's all this is. It's still costing you more for everyday items. The increase is just not as high as it was one year ago, year over year. But we are still above the record high numbers of last year, which is not a good sign. So that's how to look at it. But don't let you know the media fool you. Inflation's down, yes, but prices are still up. They're just not increasing as quickly as they were one year ago when they were up, you know, eight, nine, ten percent. That that's that's what this is really about. On the text line, Pete, the price of Bud Light has gone down. Very, very good job. <laughs> you know, you wonder if Bud Light hadn't been getting hammered, you wonder how much the inflation number is impacted by Bud Light getting absolutely slaughtered the last three months. Excellent job on the text line. That's well done for 622 on a Thursday. Now, speaking of well done, the uh, Missouri Attorney General has signed on to a letter with other AGs in Indiana, Arkansas, Idaho, Kentucky, Mississippi, and South Carolina. Andrew Bailey. He signed this letter. He joined six other states advising Target to immediately cease promoting and selling its 2023 Pride collection to minors. He writes here, corporations have taken a hard left turn to force a woke ideology on the families rather than protect children. And Missouri's not going to stand for it, writes Andrew Bailey. Target marketed and sold LGBTQIA plus promotional products to families and young children as part of a comprehensive effort to promote gender and sexual identity amongst kids. For instance, Target marketed girls' swimsuits with tuck-friendly construction and extra crotch coverage for male genitalia. It's also purposely sold and produced merchandise by the self-declared Satanist-inspired brand, Abprolen. I don't know who they are, but that's the brand which is known for designs that glorify violence. Further, Target sold items featuring the phrase, we bash back with a heart-shaped mace, a heavy club, typically having a metal head and spikes in the trans flag colors. Another design includes the phrase, transphobe collector, alongside a skull. Yet another product features skulls beside a guillotine labeled as a homophobe headrest. He says, this is disgusting, writes the attorney general. Target has a fiduciary duty to put its shareholders first rather than push a sexual agenda on kids. And we're putting them on notice. Following publicity over its decision to market such items, Target suffered a historic drop in sales and stock price. Target made the conscious decision to force a sexual ideology onto unwitting children, and now they're rightfully suffering the economic consequences of that decision. Now, you know, I'm torn on this because as much as I can't stand Target promoting this stuff to kids, there is a part of me that says the free market did its job here. You and I did our job by at least giving Target a blow, forcing them to suffer an economic blow. When you look at their stock price, what's happened to them over the last few weeks, it hasn't been Bud Light-esque, and I do believe Target will come back because Target's not a single, there's not a single thing that Target sells that you can really boycott. It's not as easy as, as beer. But the message was clearly sent to Target. And As someone who is inherently against the idea of more government being involved in our lives, my approach here inherently with Target wants to be, hey, we, Mr. Attorney General, thanks for all you're doing, but we took care of this, right? Like when it comes to schools 
and what attorney generals have done when it comes to schools, that makes more sense because the kids have to go to school. If I want to punish Target, if I want to make sure my kids don't go into Target during certain months of the year when I think there might be inappropriate things in there, okay, that's on me as a parent. I can choose to do that or I can choose not to do that. But this is, this is a gray area, and I'm not convinced that I love the idea of any attorney general taking this approach with a corporation. Because what's to say that on the other end, you could not have Democratic attorneys general going after Hobby Lobby or Chick-fil-A if they have some Christian display in their store that they may find offensive? I I know it's not the same, but my point is if we go down this road and we have AGs going after corporations by saying, well, you know, you can't put this display up in your store, I, I get the politics of it. And I've been very supportive and remain supportive of what the attorney general for Missouri has done and the approach that he's taken. Smart dude, high energy. He's been very good replacing Eric Schmidt. But I do wonder if this is a bridge too far. When you talk about whether or not you want your attorneys general going after corporations over displays in their stores, John. Yeah, there might be some other things they could concern their time with because I vote with my dollars. I'm living proof you can't avoid Target. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's not conscious. It's just like I don't yeah. go into Targets. I've yeah. got other places so you can avoid them. Yeah, and, absolutely. And live, right. I mean, we were at... um, That's the way free enterprise works. Exactly. Exactly. Vote with your dollar. I mean, do we want them to go after Bud Light for their ad with Mulvaney? No. I want the free market to decide whether or not they should suffer consequences over the Mulvaney ad. Like, we were at a July 4th party, and a lot of the women were like, hey, I'm trying to avoid Target. Now, it's tough. You tell moms to avoid Target, young moms to avoid Target, I promise you it's not easy. But they're all trying. They're giving it their best effort. And when it comes to Target in particular and these kind of displays, my gut tells me to let us handle it. I love you, Mr. Attorney General, but we got this one. That's kind of my approach here. 913-408-7710. Do you want to see the AG go after Target like this or do you want to say, no, 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 we got this in the free market? Pete Mundo on KCMO. I very much appreciate our attorney general in Missouri. His name is Andrew Bailey. He's done a great job taking over for Eric Schmidt, who's now, of course, in the U.S. Senate. But I'm I'm very torn on this one. Yesterday, the attorney general announced that he's joining six other states advising Target to immediately cease promoting and selling its 2023 pride collection to minors. And it's not that I disagree with. Of course, I agree that Target should not be selling Pride merchandise to minors. I don't want them to do that. We talked a lot about that last month as Target was like, you know, in many of its stores around the country, they had tuck-friendly swimsuits right there for you if you want to get one as a minor. Right as you walk in the door. I think that's wholly inappropriate. But... From a legal perspective, from a government perspective, do I want attorneys general around the country telling any business, assuming they're not breaking a law, whether or not they can sell something in a store? I, I'm, I'm not sure that's a road I want to go down. Yeah, you're consistent because we talked about this with executive orders. Yeah, right. exactly the president. right. president, mm-hmm. same thing. Absolutely. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, <laughs> bingo. Be careful what you wish for. Now, the attorney general does warn that Target may have violated child protection laws, but the key word there is may. It's not like, you know, it's very black and white and it's clear they did. He's just suggesting they may have. And if you feel like you got a good case, I'm okay going ahead with that. But once again, this is generally speaking, I would say this is not a road I want to be going down. 913-408-7710. 913-408-7710. I want to welcome you on. It's early on a Thursday. Let's say hi to Ken. He's in Kansas City. What's up, Ken? Good morning. Yeah, hey, good morning, Pete. Love your show. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, hey, for me, there's nothing to be torn about on this issue. It, it, 
government needs to stay out of free trade and free commerce. The, the, the consumers are going to dictate what Target does and does not offer. And, you know, the AGs, I'd be okay with them doing like, you know, some kind of a letter or declaration or something, you know, stating their viewpoint or standpoint, but not a cease and desist. You know, that, that's a door that swings both ways. I think you touched on that earlier. And, you know, they just got to be real careful on this kind of a slippery slope because we start swinging it one way on this, you know, I'm all for getting rid of all this woke and, and what Target's trying to do. But, you know, government involvement in that, it could swing the other way, too. Exactly. So there, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're, to, to me, I, I know you say your gut tells you and you're torn about it. Man, there's nothing to be torn about. This, this, this is a no-brainer. Government needs to stay out of free trade. All right. I, you know what, Ken? You sold me, brother. You sold me, brother, Ken. I like that. Um, you're right. I, I, you know, it just, I feel so strongly about the issue as a father with two little girls. This issue is very personal to me because of how insane our culture has become. And I'm also torn because I really like our attorney general. I think he's doing an outstanding job. So those two reasons, emotionally, I'm admitting to Ken and to you that I I should not be this torn. I should just say what Ken said, which is that this is a slippery slope. We don't want the government going down this road of telling a corporation what they can and cannot sell out of their building, right? We don't want that. I don't want that. You don't want that. But because I like the AG a lot and because I believe in what he stood for on these cultural issues and as a father of two young daughters, this all is personal. But Ken's right. I agree with Ken. I do not want to go down this road. 913-408-7710. 913-408-7710. Victor's in Parkville. Hello, Victor. Good morning. Good morning, Pete. You're doing a disservice, sir. I mean, I Googled uh, Missouri Attorneys General and Target, and I came up with ago.mo.gov, hashtag blah, blah, blah. It's not just about the tucking stuff. It's not just about that type of woke uh, type of uh, attire. There's also things having to do with uh, We Bash Back, which shows a pride-colored mace. Uh, it shows, uh, oh, geez, what the heck is it talking about here? Uh, it's, it t- shows something about by a guillotine with homophobe headrest. Yes. I mean, these, now, if we're not supposed to be able, to, general populace, not supposed to be able to stand in a, in a theater screaming fire or promote violent type of uh, actions, isn't that what this is doing? Aren't they actually selling merchandise that is promoting violence? against individuals who are not for the LGBT, LMNOP plus whatever. I mean, this is what they're doing. I, I see, well, I see what you're saying. Now, some of those things I know that everyone's not listening to every minute, but some of those things I had mentioned, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes ago or so. But, like, here's the thing, all right. So Target I sold. I was working. Target sold. <laughs> I, that's all right, Victor. I know you're a busy man. Target sold items featuring the phrase, we bash back, with a heart-shaped right. mace and a heavy club typically having a metal head and spikes. Now, do, do I think that's appropriate? No, I, of course I don't. However, how far do we want to take it? I mean, back in the emo days, where's Mark to talk about the emo clothing okay. from 25 years, 20 years ago? I'm here. Okay. He's here. You know, I mean, like there's, I don't know, how far do you want to take it? If, if you've got I, a I, MAGA t-shirt with two machine guns on it, is someone going to say, oh, that's hate, so, oh boy, what are well, you going to do with those if, machine again, guns? Well, if you're going, now again, it depends upon the particular type of store. If the store is known for that type of thing, I mean, do you want a, uh, a, a clothing design that, that comes out with a big old cross saying, you know, you're going to hell and pointing to, to the rainbow flag or something? I mean, the, you know, or the rainbow going, leading down into the gates of Hades? No, I don't, I don't think that's appropriate either. But the other aspect of this article was also talking about that Target has a fiduciary responsibility to its shareholders, and they may be in violation of, of obligated to by promoting an item that is actually damaging their brand. 
Mm-hmm. Now, I understand what you're talking about. But do we want do we want that. do we want government officials determining whether or not corporations are violating fiduciary duties, or do we want the board and the shareholders to dictate that? Un- un- unfortunately, at this point, and I agree with you in, gen- in general. I agree with you. If all things being equal, but the liberal left and these and the LGBTQ community promote. Uh, they are utilizing the legal system and everything possible to go ahead and promote their products and to beat down against people who we just want to live our lives and be normal. Yeah. Normal normal is the average of society. That is the that is the dictionary definition and the psychiatric definition of what is normal. Okay? So if you're gonna go against me and utilize the legal system against me as a normal individual then yeah, I'm going to utilize the legal system and every pa- and everything within my power, including the government, to fight back. That's what they're. That's what's actually starting to happen. They're starting to get that blowback. No longer are the people on the right or even in the center being tolerant. Now we're tired of every, from whatever gender, whether it's that or communism or so whatever it is. They're continuing to pull us left, farther and farther left. And we are seeing the deterioration of our nation. And I, our agree. Core American I, I agree. That's I agree. I agree. That's what it's all about. I agree with that wholeheartedly, Victor, wholeheartedly. And frankly, I believe that the arguments being won were winning the argument. There was a new NBC poll that showed 70%, 70, 70, 70% of Americans don't believe that you should be able to participate in the sport. That does not match your biological sex. Despite the fact that corporate America and woke media are telling you that you should accept that, 70% of Americans are not accepting that in a new poll that was done by NBC News. So I'm very encouraged that Americans are waking up, that the, the battles, so to speak, the cultural battles are being won. Sanity is winning out. I'm more optimistic on this than you are. And that's where I see, too, this attorney general's move. And I really do appreciate so much what the attorney general has done. I look at it and I say, well, we're, we're winning this thing, yes, with some government help where needed. I'm just not convinced going after Target for selling merchandise that I don't really care for and I wouldn't buy my kids. I, I'm not sure that's the next step that needs to be taken here. 913-408-7710. Quentin Lucas will be here at 730. Do not miss him on KCMO Talk Radio. Um, we also, by the way, have a new candidate trying to take down Sharice Davids. Prasanth Reddy is his name. He's got an incredible story that we'll be sharing with you. He'll be in the studio at 830 today. Pete Mundo on KCMO. 650 welcome in on a wednesday morning on kcmo talk radio we did just have a uh, glitch on the streams i'm being told by the engineering staff here at kcmo that we are back up and running so if you listen on the stream just be sure to uh pull us back up however you're listening on the kcmo app the iheart app we are back and running got a thumbs up there from the markster on the other side so there we go. I can listen to us from right in here on my phone. Oh, that's beautiful. A beautiful thing. But don't do that because if you got to hit the dump button, the stream's on like a two-minute delay. So please don't do that. Thank you very much. So uh, we've got a new candidate trying to take down Sharice Davids in Kansas's 3rd Congressional District. And uh, this district is looking more and more like Sharice Davids could hold it for a very long time if she wants to. Sharice Davis, of course, won the district back in 2018 against Kevin Yoder. She won it again in 2020 against Amanda Atkins. And then in their second matchup against Amanda Atkins, she, let's be honest, smoked her by double digits. That resulted in me having to run a naked lap around the corporate woods building last November. So, yeah, quite an embarrassing moment for me in my career. So now, you know, I've been thinking about it. Do we look at, because we always followed this third district closely. It was a swing district. It's right here in our backyard. There's a lot of attention on it. But lately, I've been wondering, gosh, are we going to treat this like the Emanuel Cleaver district? 
where like we kind of talk about some of the Republicans running, but it's not really worth our time, let's be honest, because it's such a stronghold for Democrats. I never thought it was going to be that bad per se, but I did think after the elections last year, I thought, gosh, I mean, we may have to focus less on the third district because like it's not competitive. No offense, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about a political race that isn't going to be close because you're not going to really care about it. Well, there's a new guy who's in the mix and he is trying and he will try and he may be the best bet to ultimately take down Sharice Davids. His name is Prasanth Reddy. He's a Johnson County oncologist. And everything I heard about this guy, he made the announcement official yesterday. Everything I heard about this guy is that a lot of people who are ready to give up on the 3rd District, they got reengaged by Reddy, who immigrated to Kansas from India as a child. He went to K-State and, he had to, and the University of Kansas Medical Center, and he has in many ways lived the American dream. He put out his announcement video yesterday, Prasant Reddy, trying to take down Sharice Davids. Here's what that sounded like. Sometimes bad news becomes the catalyst for life-saving action. The most difficult part of my job was telling my patients those two dreaded words, it's cancer. Some tumors are benign, abnormal collections of cells that cannot invade other parts of the body. But when cancers can spread, action must be taken immediately. Extremist ideas used to be fringe in America, isolated and harmless. But now, these malignant ideas are spreading, infiltrating our most important institutions and destroying the very fabric of our nation. I'm Dr. Prasanth Reddy. To save America, we must act now. When I immigrated here as a child, my parents taught me that America meant freedom and opportunity. And when we arrived here in Kansas, we started to build our American dream. For me, that meant studying and eventually medical school. But then, the unthinkable. I was in the operating room when I heard that horrific news, and it drove me to action. So I became a citizen and joined the U.S. Air Force Reserves, serving for nearly 20 years. It was a privilege to give back to the country that's given me so much. And now, with so much bad news out of Washington, I'm stepping up again. I'm Dr. Prasad Reddy. I'm an immigrant, a businessman, a military officer, and a cancer physician. I'm running for Congress because to heal America, we have a lot of work to do. We must support our police to keep crime out of our community. We must secure our border to stop deadly fentanyl from endangering our families. We must ensure every child has a shot at a quality education. Now is the time to act to save the greatest country on earth. Yeah. I'm Dr. Prasanth Reddy. Join me. Well, like everybody who announces via a political video, it was two minutes, which is too long. But, and they all do that. Republicans, Democrats, they all do that. Consultants and the media folks got to make a buck here. All right. But overall, the guy's got a hell of a story. If you were to find somebody and dig up a resume of somebody who might be able to knock off Sharice Davids in 2024, this is as close to the guy or gal that you would draw up on paper as you could find. Immigrant to this country from India, incredibly successful, lived the American dream um, as an oncologist, served this country as an officer in the Air Force Reserve and got compelled to serve following the September 11th attacks 22 years ago now. Like, that's that's the guy on paper that you would want. That's a guy who should resonate, I would imagine, with many voters in this district, in Johnson County in particular, who are not going to be moved by somebody in hindsight like an Amanda Atkins because Sharice Davids could bang her over the head with the Sam Brownback ties all day. I'm going to ask Prasanth Reddy if he's ever met Sam Brownback. Because as I said last year, after Amanda Atkins lost, I said whoever's going to have a chance has to literally have never met Sam Brownback to potentially win this seat back. 
And I don't think he ever has because the Democrats haven't hit him with that just yet. 913-408-7710. The media is finally getting it right, by the way, on the Andrew Jackson statue situation. We'll get to that next. Well, I'm glad I got that reminder from John Anthony that we have a quarterback that is now out on Netflix. It dropped last night. Patrick Mahomes, behind-the-scenes look at the season that was, along with Kirk Cousins and Marcus Mariota. By the way, has there been a drop-off in reality TV From the top dog to the other two folks or the other people on the show. I mean, probably not since the Jersey Shore with the situation. Has there been a drop off from major reality TV star that people care about to the rest of the cast? I mean, my imagine if because I know Peyton Manning's company is the one who produced this show. Could you imagine if they didn't get Mahomes for this quarterback Netflix documentary? And it was like Kirk Cousins, Marcus Mariota, and give me another incredibly mediocre quarterback I'm not thinking of. Well, from last year, Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. <laughs> uh, and Tannehill. Or Tannehill. Tannehill, probably better. Geno Smith. I don't. I mean, Geno didn't make the playoffs, but y- you get the point, right? I mean, this thing would not have nearly the amount of juice as it does. Have any of you guys watched any of the episodes? Oh, Mark, you watched a little bit of it last night? I watched the first two episodes. How many are there? Uh, there's eight. How was the first? How were the first two? Uh, the first two were pretty good. Really? Uh, Mahomes definitely is the star. You can tell. Yeah, he's the star. They try to even it out, but Mahomes gets a little more. Well, I mean, no offense to Kirk Cousins and Marcus Mariota, but my goodness, I'd be more interested in a Mariota documentary from when he was at Oregon than I would be from his time last year as the Falcons quarterback. Spoiler alert, they do show some of his college highlights. <laughs> uh, Mariota's? Yeah. I'm not surprised by that. He was a better college quarterback than he is a pro quarterback, as far as I can tell. Okay. Uh, you, will you watch it, John? Oh, yeah. I'll try to check it out, as a matter of fact. I thought I heard Chris talking about this yesterday, wasn't he, Mark? We are pu- puzzling why these three individuals, how this all came about. And it's like, hmm. Take the best guy and then maybe number 15 and then uh, number 33 or something like that, right? Well, yeah, I, I I don't know. I'm sure that if Peyton Manning had his brothers, he would have had Mahomes and Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. Joe Burrows, right? Yeah, Joe Burrow. Maybe uh, uh, Baltimore Lamar. Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, maybe. Yeah. You know, you, you'd go for the stars. But I'm guessing a lot of teams were like, we don't need this, right? That seemed to be the case. I think Mark and I were just talking off the air yesterday, and you thought it was interesting that Mahomes asked for Andy Reid's permission, I think, or at least, you know, checked with the coach before he signed on. Well, that makes sense. He Mm -hmm. probably would have had to. What, to me, it shows is an incredible amount of trust that this organization has in Mahomes to not do something stupid or viral. (laughs) I, I mean, really, for a guy who still is in his 20s, he's incredibly mature. And I guarantee you that most coaching staffs and most organizations are going to be like, you know, Peyton, I love you. I'm sure your company does a good job. But we just, it's not even about you. It's about us, right? It's the old, it's not you, it's me. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes when they do these docuseries, they're banking on kooky relative there. So they're like, hey, is Jackson around? <laughs> Has he seen your new place yet? Well, Have you, you had him over? You know, if I'm uh, if I'm Patrick and if I'm Andy Reid and if I'm the Chiefs, if I'm the Hunt family, Jackson's not making a cameo. I'm sure QC quality control is in effect. <laughs> if I, yeah, exactly right. Jackson, it, it is in the contract that Jackson will not make an appearance in this documentary. In the first two episodes, I think I see his back once. You saw, okay, you yeah. saw Jackson's back. Well, that's that's it. That's all we have to see. That's plenty of Jackson Mahomes. The back is all we have to see. There's nothing more that I've got to see from Jackson Mahomes than the back of his T-shirt. That's just enough. So I, I got some time off here coming up. I will be watching quarterback. It's not the quarterback. It's just quarterback, right? Quarterback, yeah. Quarterback. All right. It, it does make Kirk Cousins a little more likable. He's kind of like a dorky, goofy guy, it seems like. And they kind of show that a little bit. But he kind of wears the dad shirts in his press conferences and stuff. They, they go about that in the first episode. So it's kind of fun. Well, all I know is this much. I want to have Kirk Cousins' agent. That guy has been making $30 million a year as a mediocre quarterback for multiple years now. I mean, that, that Kirk Cousins has the best agent in the NFL. It is amazing. Last year, he had a one-year $35 million deal. 
I, this year he's going to make close to $30 million. The, the guy, he's never going to win you a championship. He's never going to get you to a championship game. And they pay this dude 30 plus mil a year. Sign me up for that. He's like Derek Carr. Yeah. <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah, more or less. He is a, he's Derek Carr of the NFC. And he just keeps cashing fat checks. It's really incredible. He got a three-year, $84 million deal from the Vikings when he signed with them. I mean, for mediocre Kirk Cousins. Holy cow. I mean, boom, boom, boom. that's big bucks right there. Woo. Boy, oh, boy. Okay. Well, uh, in Jackson County, you heard this on this show the other day, by the way. There was all this talk about how they were going to take down the statues of Andrew Jackson outside of the Independence and KCMO courthouses after a vote that took place by the Jackson County Legislature on Monday. And uh, it turns out that that's not true. That's not what's happening at all. The media reported it wrong in this town on Tuesday. And it took one of the legislators, Sean Smith, coming on this show to correct Kansas City Media. And now they're all getting it right. Wow. How about that? Talk about a bombshell. Once again, we are just, our only purpose here in town is to correct the rest of media in Kansas City. That's the only purpose that we serve. That's why we're here. And we did that again this week. Fact checkers debunking misinformation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that all day, four hours a day, every day on KCMO. So now Fox 4 Fox 4 getting it right with their new story last night. Jackson County voters to decide fate of Andrew Jackson statues in 2024. This is once again going to go to the vote of the people in Jackson County next November. Despite the fact that you in Jackson County voted on this three years ago. In 2020, 59% of Jackson County voters said they want to keep the statues. They want to keep the Andrew Jackson statues. And let me just share, if, if voters were not going to fall for it in 2020, which was the year of canceling Uncle Ben and Aunt Jemima and Land of Lakes Indian and everything else, they're not going to do it next year. If there was ever a time to get voters to sign off on removing historical statues, it was the insanity of 2020. People have calmed down. They've realized removing a statue, one, does nothing to the general discourse. And two, Andrew Jackson does not have statues up in this county because he was a slave owner and he oversaw the Trail of Tears. He has stat- you, you, they try to frame it as, well, the only reason Andrew Jackson has a statue is because, well, people love slavery. No, because he was a president and he was a war hero from the Revolutionary War all the way through the War of 1812. That's why the guy has statues. And that's why he's a prominent figure. And that's why he has counties named after him and everything else. That's why. So the Jackson County Legislature thinks that you will fall for this trick again next year and you will for some reason vote to remove the statues they are wasting their time and you just have to prove that to them at the polls next year it's really that simple but they can keep trying by the way what about if there was a vote on removing frank white's statue that might be a lot more popular if if you want to talk about getting rid of statues in this county i think that statue There would be an overwhelming support in getting rid of Frank White's statue long before getting rid of Andrew Jackson's statue. Let's put up an Alex Gordon statue where he's pointing to the sky after his home run (laughs) and getting one against the Mets. Sorry. That's fine. That's fine. I'm okay with that. Can you put that poll up on Twitter, Mark, for me? Put a poll up on Twitter, on the KCMO Talk Radio Twitter page. Which statue, and I'll share it at Pete Mundo, which statue would you rather see gone from Jackson County? Andrew Jackson or Frank White? 913-408-7710. I have a feeling on which way that poll is going to go. 913-408-7710 as we approach 715. Bottom of the hour, Mayor Lucas will join us. Pete Mundo, right here on KCMO. Well, the votes are rolling in fast and furious on Twitter. Find it at KCMO Talk Radio. And I just retweeted it at Pete Mundo. You can see it there. Which statue would you rather see gone from Jackson County? Andrew Jackson or Frank White? And we've already got a couple dozen votes here just in the last few minutes. And (laughs) let's just put it this way. 
Frank White is running away with this thing. It's going to take a, uh, you know, you're going to have to have some overnight ballot dumps a la 2020 to get Andrew Jackson in the lead here right now. It, it's it's going to take a big effort to get Andrew Jackson ahead of Frank White after the early voting is showing that Frank White has taken a tremendous lead. Uh, there's not a single vote for Andrew Jackson yet. Not, not one. Not one. Not one. Oh, my goodness. All right. We want to get your votes. On the KCMO Talk Radio Twitter page. It's up there right now. Or the text line, 913-408-7710. Good to be back on a Thursday morning. Uh, let's say hi to Tony. He's in Kansas City. What's up, Tony? Good morning. Hey, how's it going? It's going well, Tony. What's happening? Hey, man, I'm just thinking about the Andrew Jackson thing and the voting on that from three years ago versus now. Maybe they feel like they've got a lot better at cheating in elections. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a better chance. Yeah. So you think the Jackson County Legislature, many of whom want to see the Andrew Jackson statues come down, you're suggesting that maybe they might, uh, you know, finagle a few things to make sure that uh, people, shall we say, vote the right way. That's the way I see things going down in this country these days. All right, Tony. Have a good one, man. Uh, All right, buddy. You take care. You have a good All day. Right. Uh, I'm so confident in Jackson County voters that I don't think it would matter what they do. I don't think any shenanigans would matter whatsoever. The people of Jackson County are not going to vote to remove his statues because they aren't insane. Now, Jackson, now think about this, by the way. Jackson County is a Democratic county. It is run by Democrats, by and large, from the county executive all the way down. The legislature, you have a blue county that voted to keep the Andrew Jackson statues by an 18% margin. What does that tell you? That even many Democrats are not interested in removing statues to erase history. Not because they support and but not because they support Andrew Jackson as a slaveholder or anything like that. It's because they know that statues of guys who, you know, were presidents of the United States does not make any sense because those statues don't exist to honor the worst things they did in their lives and looking at their lives through the prism of 2023 values but rather because those statues are there because they serve their country. And yes, there was a bad part of their history, but there was also a positive part of their history that should be honored and should be discussed and can be celebrated. You can say Andrew Jackson was a great American war hero while also admitting that, yes, in hindsight, he should not have owned slaves. If you say Andrew Jackson was a war hero, it doesn't mean you support everything the guy ever did. It doesn't mean you support him being a slaveholder. But when you have people uh, like a Manny Abarca, let's say, who is a Jackson County legislator, who's a guy who pushed for this to go back on the ballot in 2024, when Jackson County voters are likely going to have to vote again on whether or not to remove Andrew Jackson's statues. Oh, sorry. Hit the wrong button there. When you have people like that out there who insist that Andrew Jackson was nothing more than a slaveholder, well, that's how you end up with these conversations getting as stupid as they've become. 913-408-7710. Hey, you join us on KCMO Talk Radio. Stephen's in Johnson County. Stephen, what's up? Hey, how's it going, Doc? All right there, Doctor. All right there, Doctor. All right. I just, I just want to ask, uh, I, you know, you know that's, that's the difference about the woke and leftist people, it's always got to do away with what they don't like, and it never ends. It's a, it never in a cycle. But what I really want to ask you, I want to ask you to ask the mayor, why is it that he's asking for a raise in the middle of a situation like we in now? Because that, that came out on the thing yesterday on Facebook. Uh, that he's asking for uh, a, a raise. Mm-hmm. They, they're voting to get a mm-hmm. raise. I want you to ask that. And also... The people that were killed, the guy that was killed on 40 Highway, the Shell Station, Gene Peters Baker is refusing to prosecute that guy. 
you know, these are things that, 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 that in, in, in the urban core, this, you, this is what you vote for, and these are the kind of people you get. I've been telling this for the longest. Yeah, thank I you, Stephen. Right I appreciate it, man. We will get that. Your phone's giving us feedback, so i got to drop you there. Uh, but, yes, we can get to that with the mayor because that is going to be part of our conversation coming up here in minutes. Wes is on KCMO. Go ahead, Wes. Good morning. Yeah, Pete, I just finished a book, coincidentally, about Andrew Jackson by Brian Kilmeade. Everybody who's thinking about voting, uh, everyone in Jackson County should read that book. It's at the Mid-Continent, okay? Andrew Jackson was a hell of a lot more than just a slave owner. And just real quick, I don't want to give away the book. He was the first president from the western part of the country. Now, Tennessee back then was considered the western part of the country. That was tremendous for uniting the country. Two, the British take New Orleans, baby. We're a whole different country. Well said. Well said there, Wes. I got to run. You're spot on. I got to read that Kill Me book, by the way. Uh, that is that is on my list. I got to get to that. On the text line, Pete, all the people who hate Andrew Jackson can send their $20 bills to me. <laughs> Mayor Quentin Lucas is coming up next on KCMO.